Hey everyone! I'm sorry for taking so long to make this video, but it's finally here and we are going to talk about Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe as a Renaissance play. Now, first we need to talk about what is Renaissance. The Renaissance is the period from the 15th century to the 17th century. It is the period after the medieval times and before the age of the restoration and the age of neoclassicism. It is the age when Queen Elizabeth I had lived. So in England it was the golden age, but it did not start in England. It started in Italy. It started with the works of Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. The word Renaissance itself is an Italian word. It means the revival. It was the revival of art, the revival of philosophy, the revival of many human aspects. And it spread across Europe and reached England eventually. Now, the play Dr. Faustus is originally a German myth. It is written by Christopher Marlowe and the full title of the play is The Tragic History of Dr. Faustus. So it is a tragedy. Well, the tragedy is about someone who is better than ordinary people, but this someone has a weakness, has a flaw. He has a tragic flaw or a hamartia, and this tragic flaw leads him to his tragic downfall, which leads him eventually to his tragic end. And in this play, we have Dr. Faustus, who is a man of knowledge, he is a doctor, but he refuses all previous knowledges in order for him to learn magic, because he thinks that magic is the only way that he can know the mysteries of the world. And he goes on to learn magic, and eventually this leads him to selling his soul to the devil. And after wasting many, many years doing absolutely nothing and learning absolutely nothing, he goes eventually to hell and this would be his tragic end. But this is not what the play is about. It's not about how not to sell your soul to the devil. Now, talking about this play as a Renaissance play, well, first we need to talk about the characters. They are complex. What do you mean by complex characters? Well, you can't name a character as good or evil. The character is both good and evil. You see the demon, the devil, Mephistopheles. This devil uh, does not convince Dr. Faustus to take a pact with Lucifer. He talks about the horrors of hell. He does not talk about how good it is to be with the devil, although he is a demon. He talks about how horrifying it is to be in hell. And it is something bad to leave heaven. You see, he talks good about God and bad about the devil. And this is not normal. He is supposed to be an evil character, but he speaks something good. Now, you see Dr. Faustus, who is supposed to be a good man, but he does so many evil things. He is supposed to be a man of knowledge, but he does so many stupid things. So this means that the character does not only have one side, but many sides, and a complex character. And this is one of the characteristics of the Renaissance age. Now, Dr. John Faustus as a complex character has something very clear about him, which is the two angels, the good angel and the evil angel. They represent the good side of Faustus and the bad side of Faustus. They represent redemption and damnation. Now, other than the characters, we have something called the contradictory wide themes. You see, we have religion and magic. We have redemption and predestination. We have those very contradictory themes in the same play. We have wealth and power and knowledge and we have comedy and stupidity and meaningless silly acts. All that in one play. And this is the contradictory themes that are used to be in Renaissance plays. We also have the style of the play. Now, this play is written by Christopher Marlowe and Christopher Marlowe is known to be a man of parody, a man of satire. Now you can see this clearly by the many ironies in the play. First, we have a man of knowledge who is doing stupid, silly things. Second, we have his servant and his servant talks to scholars. Now usually when a servant talks to scholars, the scholars must control the conversation, but we don't see this. We see the servant controlling the conversation and confusing the scholars. And this is not normal. We also have another thing. It's called the golden mean. Now the golden mean is where we have a very low character, like the clown in the play, and a very high character, like Dr. Faustus. And you see, Dr. Faustus sells his soul, and the clown sells his soul. And they both do similar things, which makes them 
very close to each other, which brings them to something similar. We call it the golden means, where the high character and the low character become very much alike. In the medieval times, when they wanted to make a play, they make it very general and very broad. Take for example the play Everyman. It is about a character named Everyman. And this character is very general. He represents all mankind. But this does not happen in the Renaissance. Why? Because we are talking about individualism. What is individualism? It's talking about the experiences of one person. And this person represents only himself. We can relate to him, but he is not us. He is not all of humankind. He is only Dr. Faustus. And we are talking about this Dr. Faustus as a man. And we're not talking about him as a symbol for all mankind. We also have another shift. In the medieval times, they used to think that God is the center of the universe. That God controls all our lives and fates. We can't do anything to change that. We are already destined to be good or evil. We are already destined to go to heaven or hell. But in the Renaissance, we don't have that. We don't have this predestination. We have something else. We have humanism. What do we mean by this? We mean that humans actually have a say in altering and changing the fates. They can be good or evil. It's not just God who controls everything in the world. Another thing. Now, the classical Greek plays used to follow the law of the three unities. The unity of time, the unity of action, and the unity of place. Which means the play happens in 24 hours in one city and it talks about one act. Now, we don't have this in the Renaissance. This play, Dr. Faustus, does not happen in 24 hours, but in 24 years. And it is not in one city, but in many countries. And the lead character, Dr. Faustus, does not do only one thing, but many things. It's not just about selling his soul to the devil, but what does he do with the power that he gets? 